What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. He asked, if you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands. And all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. What's up guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're on to episode four of this hot poopy dukes determinalist. Why can't you just go into it with an open mind? Oh, you gotta start off like no, that. No, cause this show sucks. All right, guys. This, sucks. this show sucks so bad. Listen, when someone reviewed this, I understand that you guys really like this show and you were upset that I didn't like it. I'm sorry. We brought Kurt to make sure. Obviously, we brought Kurt because he's up. It's Kurt. You guys love Kurt. But Kurt. He's on the show? Yeah, because he's the host of the show. But Kurt, we made sure that. I guess what I was trying to say is that we made sure Kurt was here specifically for these episodes because he loves this show. You need an objective opinion. Right. So to, to counter my disdain for this show, because I fuck. Look, the, the I way, hate the show. I think right now you Try just, not to cuss. you're so hard nosed and like dug in on your stance that yeah. you are you have blinders on and nothing will make you change your mind. No matter how good the show is, you're never gonna change your mind because you don't want to be you don't you fear the ridicule of, of of waffling on your decision. It's no, fine. It's okay. I do not at all. I would be happy to waffle, whatever the heck that means. What is a <laughs> waffle on my decision? I would love to do that because, like, I'm on the side of them. Like, it's a uh, a Republican SF show by a Navy SEAL. I want to like it. But then you guys, you guys, you guys watching this right now, you, this is your fault because this is one thing that you did. So all our viewers and all our fans, we love you guys. But this is one thing you did. You said, this show is great. You should watch it. So we watched it. I said, I think it's garbage. But you also said there's another show out there you should watch, and the comments blew up about it, and that's the SEAL Team show. Yeah. And then so, fine, I listened to you guys again. I went and watched SEAL Team. It's amazing. I love that show. It's one of my Yo, favorite shows. I, from minute, I've only watched the first episode, and we're going to review that. It's coming up, guys. All your comments about which show to watch, trust me, we get to them, and we're going to do them. Uh, we just film them in batches, so it takes a while to get to the next batch. But I watched from the minute one of SEAL Team all the way to the end of the episode, I was on the edge of my seat. Yeah. I loved it. So you guys, I'm trying not to cuss for Abel, but you guys know what a good show is because you like SEAL Team and you recommended SEAL Team, and it's amazing. So why do you like this trash? It's garbage. The whole plot Every time, the best review of this show was somebody talking about how it's the perfect thing to have on a background in a barbecue. You know why they said that? Because no matter when you come back to this show, if you take a nap, you go take a dump, you go out to the barbecue, you come back, it's two people talking, trying to create some kind of plot that doesn't need to be there. This is not a deep show. What is this show? It's Action Movie 101. Someone kills Guy's family, Guy has special operations experience, Guy kills everyone who killed family. The end. <laughs> Get, tell me I'm wrong. No, but he's got brain cancer. Oh, okay, he's got PTSD. Okay, what is that adding to the point that someone killed his family, he makes a hit list, and goes out and kills everyone that killed his family? The end. show makes me so mad. <laughs> you need to take a drink or something. Ah, dude, Jesus. I'm... Heat it. Jesus. There you go. Make your way. My little gazelle. The rest of the Daddy. I love you.
All right, that scene was that scene was hella sad. Yeah. Like he's doing the hike up the mountain with his daughter, and then all of a sudden she's not there. That was sad. That was corny, but it was sad. Corny, but it fits with the plot that you say doesn't exist. There is this whole time he's having these visions and these flashbacks because he's got the brain issue, because he's got everything else going on. It all ties into this plot that you don't see. The plot is a one sentence. People kill family. Guy kills people. But That's the whole thing. That's the, the whole The issue show. is you're not looking into the subtext for each of those. People kill family, all right? But who is it? And they're going down the rabbit hole figuring it out. And there's so many different layers to who it is that when you Yo, that watch the show hole? objectively and you just like have an open mind and you start to see that it's a good show instead of watching it through your terrible show blinders that you seem to wear all the time. Bro, that it's a rabbit good fucking hole show. is deeper than the Alice in Wonderland. It is Another so good movie. ridiculous how deep that rabbit hole tries to go that every time you come back to the show, it's going further down that rabbit hole. There's no end to that rabbit hole. Mm. Okay. It's a it's a good the perfect some, response. Some parts are corny, right? Whatever. The perfect response to this show is let's just move on. <laughs> was high angle shot through the glass. So finally we got something cool. Yeah, it was a nice high angle shot. Yeah. Through glass. I don't know if I would have used a lever action rifle to do it. I don't know if you'd have an option though, right? Maybe it's just because it's his hunting rifle. Is yeah. that the whole idea is that he's using his hunting rifle? Because yeah. he doesn't, because he, even though he's a Navy SEAL super badass, he, he doesn't have any military style rifles at home. He doesn't have any semi-automatic <laughs> I'm not too upset rifles. with the rifle. For me, that's uh, a very difficult shot. That's why I would not use a lever action rifle. So I you could re engage? So I could hit it again. Yeah. It's like you got a moving target going at however fast he's going. It looks windy roads, maybe 45, 55 miles an hour. There's a good chance you're going to miss that shot. Why would you not want to be able to immediately take yeah. a second shot with a, a semi automatic sniper rifle? Yeah. So, I mean, you've got a, a notoriously difficult shot due to the elevation that he's shooting down. Then he's going through angled glass again you have a three like a three to five second window because you're, you're on a set moving up target yeah. on a moving target to only get those three to five seconds and yeah. he's completely gone and then my other issue was this is which i guess you could explain by him doing some reconnaissance and knowing patterns of life mm -hmm. but what if he had someone else in the car what if he had a kid in the car what if you know he had a girlfriend in the car or something like that lateral you're, damage you're just murdering civilians at that point that one's easy to argue away <laughs> yeah. there because you could just be like well he knows he did patterns of life reconnaissance to yeah. know that he's by himself. He goes to work at this time, all that stuff. I so. see what you're saying with the gun, though, because that's, you know, you have a very limited window. And you you lose that window. <clears throat> the amount of time it takes you to re-rack to re -rack your your, uh, mm -hmm. your charging handle is enough to lose that shot. But clearly, he's one of the best because he made it one shot, one kill. Yeah, The thing that gets me on clips like this, and we saw it in the other movie that we did, where the guy... What was the movie? The guy woke up. He was, like, trying to rob somebody and then woke up, and he was in oh, the hospital. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the car flipped a yeah, bunch. Yeah, right. So, like, this movie, as soon as he spins, all of a sudden the car just, like, catapults into the air, just, like, unnaturally. Yeah. And th that's the one thing that gets me. Like, the shot is whatever. I'm understanding that it's probably more probable for the car to flip like that than him to get that first shot, first shot, first kill like that. Um, but... The car one is the one that really pisses me off, just because as soon as he starts to spin, it just all of a sudden starts to cartwheel unnaturally. Yeah. In all honesty, that shot, the distance that that shot was taken, you don't even, you could just easily use a long barreled uh, AR and have multiple shots. You could use a, a suppressed, a long barrel suppressed with a, uh, I mean, even a five time scope. You don't even need, it wasn't that long of a shot, but I would just want to have pop, 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 or, you know, yeah. at least a follow-on shot but that's nitpicky i get it it's just he's a navy seal he's a navy seal man he's a navy baddest seal. baddest of the bad the if you guys don't know this the green berets are like the just a kid brother red-headed stepchild you know low on the totem pole navy seals 
That's where you get your real killers. Yeah. You know? I mean, look, they, their lineage comes from greats like Charlie Sheen. Yes. I yes. mean, Charlie Sheen. Need we say more? Yeah, jumping off bridges into water. I mean, that guy really nailed it. So, I mean, like, they've got the whole show SEAL team. Yeah. I mean, everything it's is not about SF Navy team. Seals. Yeah. Nobody cares about <laughs> SF. You're like, what do you even do? Like, yeah, pff, teach people how to shoot? <laughs> uh, lame. <laughs> they stopped. We need one stop. Yes. 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 Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, get it. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, damn right. Yes. I like she's having sex. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, damn it. right. Get it. Yes. One stop. One stop. <laughs> like, oh, this girl has never seen football in her uh, life, bro. <laughs> that was the uh, cringiest oh, yes. response to watching football I've ever seen. They put it on there. She's like, oh, yes. One stop. Get it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> like, who watches football uh, like that? Like, this girl is in real, like, has never seen football. She's like, I was waiting for her to be like, go. <laughs> <laughs> like, my oh, guy, man. that was so cringy, dude. <laughs> All you had to be was like, yeah, yeah, touchdown. All right. You know, watching football. Watching football. <laughs> like, or just watch it. I don't know, but her just like, yes, yes, yes. yes. Roll tide. <laughs> Go roll tide. We're rolling. <laughs> Go roll tide. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was so incredibly cringy, dude. Oh man, that was impressive. <laughs> oh, this drink sucks. It's numb. Ooh, it's so sweet. Marcus Boykin. didn't you like about that scene <laughs> was it the way that he looked out the window how, how <laughs> cheesy is it to write your kill list on your daughter's picture yeah i mean that's all he had at the time and it makes it more personal because he looks at your, his daughter okay all right all right there's four names there's four names and you already crossed out two of them. But they, they're, it's follow-on missions. Every time he gets the one, he unpeel, or peels the onion a little bit more, and another name gets added. You can't remember four people? He's got brain cancer. Give the guy some credit. He's been through a lot, okay? It's four names, Kurt! I can't remember four <laughs> names right now. I'm so fucking forgetful. And it's so <laughs> cheesy to have those four names... Written, it looked like a third grader wrote them, but you wrote them on your daughter's <laughs> picture. That would look. That That's would be me. so corny. If I didn't write them down, like it was like what was it, James Boykin or something, and I'd get there and be like, "Who are you looking for?" I'd be like, "John, uh, John Bed." Oh fuck! He killed your. Fuck! I don't remember. He killed your family. I need to write things down. I write everything down. If you, I don't even want to say it. If you did that to my family. Trust me, I remember your name. I remember your birth date, your social security, your addresses. All I think about is how I'm going to rip you to pieces. Well, he doesn't want to forget. I don't blame him for that. No, it's just another corny ass scene where they say he's on the private plane. He pulls out his daughter's picture. His kill list is there and he crosses it off. And then he dead stares out the plane waiting to land in Mexico where he meets the guy named Alex. Well, you also got to think. All right, so this season is trash. Is technically, oh, I can't believe I'm gonna say this. This season would have made a great movie. Exactly. That's but what I've been trying to say. The fact that they had to stretch it out over a season, you're gonna have to have filler scenes like exactly. that. Exactly. But yeah. I, I do get what you're saying. There's a lot of like these little filler scenes that are just kind of like Corny, excess or unnecessary. whatever. Unnecessary. Just make it a movie. This would have made one hell of an action-packed movie. It would have been a great movie. Like, even if it's, like, a three-hour-long movie mm -hmm. or whatever, or split it up into two parts, maybe. I don't yeah. know. And just so you guys know, it was intended to be a movie. Was it really? Yes. It was intended to well, be a movie. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it was intended to be a movie, and then I forget who it was. Uh, I think Jack said it that, like, the producer or somebody came in and was like, hey, this should be broken up into uh, a series. And uh -huh. I think that was a huge mistake. 
This would have been a great movie. Home run, slammed out of the park, move on, and made movie after movie. Well, you know what? Knowing that, I bet second season is going to be a lot better than because it's a purpose built season instead of a movie that I was think, turned into a season. I thought that the seasons were kind of unrelated to each other, though. Well, there's five books, I think, in the series. Yeah, but they're not connected, are they? It's the same guy. Oh, it's the same guy throughout yeah, all yeah. the books? There's five, there's five books about James Reese or whatever. Right? Yeah, James Reese. There's five books about him. I want, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that, five. Um, so each one is a continuation of his story. Oh, okay. I haven't read them, but from what I understand, each one's a continuation. Yeah, well, like I, I said, read book I'm just one. Not a, I'm just not a fan of, of a lot of fiction. Typically, I read self-help books and motivational books. Jordan Peterson, uh, The Alchemist is a good one. So stuff like that, I, don't, I just don't read pure fiction. Like, Even though right now I'm reading fiction, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is what I'm currently reading. Does it have a lot of pictures? Uh, no. Uh, I wouldn't no read it then. For the rounds, they be sure the guy went down. It's not instability, it's experience. Yeah, he's experienced. Eight combat deployments. Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Silver Star, multiple Bronze Stars. Even an Army Commendation Medal <laughs> with V-Device. <laughs> Don't get too attached. Vultures up north are already circling. I think, I think I've got one of those. <laughs> An army commendation medal. <laughs> That's like a participation award, basically. She said he's even got an RQ. <laughs> she, it's almost like she put it up there with a medal yeah, of honor. She he's even got an army commendation. An army commendation? Somebody who peeks their head over the cubicle? No fucking way. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So if you guys don't know the the order of <laughs> the order of merit for those. She started with the best, which is the Silver Star, it, the best that he had, which yep. is Silver Star. Silver Star is really hard to get. That's yep. like an exceptionally high. Uh, That's like they put you in for a Medal of Honor and they yeah, bumped it down to a Silver exactly. Star. Exactly. So Silver Star usually could be almost competing with the Medal of Honor. Like that's how big a Silver Star is. And then she goes Bronze Star, which I had. I got a Bronze Star. And then she said, uh, um, so Silver Star, Bronze Star. And then she said Arcom. And then you go, Arcom is like the lowest one of the, his whole list. Yeah. So you got Silver Stars way up here. Bronze Stars pretty good, you know, like most people get Bronze Stars after a deployment. Uh, and, but then Arcom? You got, yeah, an Army com How did yeah, Navy yeah. SEAL get an Army Commendation Medal, though? Maybe work? Can you do that? If you work with the Army, they put you in for that? I didn't even think about that. That's, I didn't think about the fact that he's not in me. the Army. And he got an Arcom. But maybe the army, yeah, maybe if he was attached to an army unit, he could have got put in for it or something. But it's just funny that she's like, he even has an arc, like, why army you even accommodation bring that medal. And it's like, that one's not a big deal at all. That's like, like like going over your list of awards like for you and being like, he even got a good conduct medal. Yeah, like, that just means you didn't get in trouble for six months. Exactly. Like, you didn't get a DUI or beat in, your wife. In ARCOM, you'll get, <laughs> you'll get an ARCOM for like going on a field rotation exercise. And like at the end of it, everyone gets ARCOMs. But they did hit it with that V device, though. Well, yeah, they threw Ooh. the V on it. So that's, like, for Valor. Yeah, so which... the V is for Valor, which I don't even know if you would do an ARCOM with V. Maybe you would, but I'm pretty sure, like, in, on our deployment, we got a lot of people with V. I got put in for a V. Um, for your Bronze Star? For the Bronze Star, but then uh, I got in a fight with the team sergeant, so that disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> so, shockingly, that disappeared. And then, like... No V for you. Like, bro... I plugged this dude's fucking hole in his leg, and you you didn't give me an Arcom with V, but then someone else just got shot at, and you gave him a V. It's like, you realize that the bullets were coming at us, hit him, I had to stop the bleeding. I'm not there to hype it up. It was just funny, because <laughs> awards in the military are very political. Sounds like you're mad because James Reese got a V device, yeah, and you didn't. on his Arcom. <laughs> that explains a lot yeah, why you hate this show. That's why I'm heated. <laughs> So it was just funny that she's like, he even has an Army Accommodation Medal. <laughs> like, he, he just won the fucking Nobel Prize. Like, bro, an ARCOM is nothing. That's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. So it was just hilarious. That's something you bring up. I wish, I, I feel like somebody should have been like, hey, you, you said those backwards. She was sick. I would have sent her a letter. She would have loved that, sweetheart. She would have loved that very much. James, I, I'm sorry. Uh, do 
to the host. You provide the drink, the land that provides the food. Hola familia. Hola familia. Oh, let me guess, you didn't like that scene either? What's the point? Why are we sitting around talking all the time in the show? Because you can't just glaze over the fact that the whole the dude's family was just killed, but We're clearly they didn't tell the kids. Episode four. We're halfway done with the entire series. These are new characters. He's going down to Mexico. It never ends. You've got to build. Clearly, they're showing that there was a history with his family and, and these people. Otherwise, it'd be like, why is he at this random Mexican farmer or <sighs> drug lord's house, whatever this guy is? Clearly, they have history, and that's what you have to, to show. Every time you hit start on this show, it's more people building this character development. Have you ever written a show before? Bro, if I did, I <laughs> swear it would be better than this. Because I would just say, hey, man, with it's they like... They killed my family, and then shoots this man, shoots this man. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, just a bunch of scenes of you somewhere else. He's in Mexico. <laughs> Kill yeah. somebody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the whole... He's like killed 300 people in 10 minutes in different locations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would be John Wick because this is boring. Like, like well, I what was the story? What does it need to be a story? He's going to kill people. He they killed his family. He's going out and killing everybody. <laughs> Why do you need to know that he's friends with this family in Mexico? Because I, he's going to go to Mexico and kill the people that killed his family. I just thought it was kind of endearing and showed like the girls just like oh I wish I would have known she was sick because clearly they didn't tell the girl about what happened you're right that ch that changed everything for me it tugs at the heartstrings yeah. so look here's the thing right you got to think this this show they're trying to and this is what worked for my family right they're doing a good mix of action and a good mix of heartfelt stuff to get the male and the female people or watchers engaged there's more action in a telenovela than there is in this show <laughs> This is a tele... <laughs> Por que, mi amor? No. This guy just brought up a telenovela. This is a telenovela without any excitement. If, if they took a telenovela and they're like, you guys can't raise your voices. That's what this show like would be. El Gordo y la Flaca. <laughs> it, would, it would be like, mi amor. Dude, I just understand the show. I completely changed my mind. <laughs> this is a chick flick. That's why I didn't get it. I was expecting a John Wick action show, and it's a chick flick in disguise. That's this is a lifetime movie. You guys were messing with kind me. Kind of, yeah. It's this a, is a you're lifetime. You're kind of movie. right, right? Well, it's it's a compromise. I wouldn't say it's a full on lifetime Mario Lopez, uh, Feliz Navidad, which is a great movie, by the if way. If you put down Mario Lopez right now, I'm gonna <laughs> bitch slap you. It's not it's not like that, but it's also not a John Wick and yeah, you're right. It's kind of, it's more of a compromise between the two. And it's to get Yeah, I don't see the compromise, but I see what you're saying. <laughs> I think it's a straight up it's a it's a chick flick. There you go. Actually, really impressed with Chris Pratt's clear right there. Right, yeah. Like his walk in, it looked good. He punched back and then punched out, which yeah, was really nice. Impressive. It was really impressive the way that he uh, his room clears there. The second thing that stood out to me in this scene was when I saw him with a shotgun. <laughs> I was like, "What the? What the? Are that, you are you kidding not me?" Not only with the shotgun, but wasn't he number one man at that point, or close to the front of the stack? Yeah, he was number. Well, he came in number two. He was two, man. Yeah, okay. Chris came in first, and then he came in second. A shotgun? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, did you just find out that you were about to do this, like, two minutes ago? Maybe the intel was bad, and they thought it was going to be really close, closed-in buildings and not a fucking farm. <laughs> what does it matter? <laughs> when would you ever choose a shotgun? Outside as your of, primary as weapon. As your primary weapon. Outside of home <laughs> defense, where you're literally you're, you're thinking about one, maybe two uh, s people that you have to put down, a shotgun's the perfect tool. You're tired, you're confused, it's dark, and you a shotgun's the perfect self-defense weapon, right? But you're doing a clear on multiple combatants knowing that you're about to get in it. 
and you chose a shotgun? What? Maybe. Maybe. No. Maybe no. he had an M4, and it broke on the way in, and we didn't see that. I don't know. When's the last time your M4 just magically broke? Never. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the worst tactical decision ever, is yeah, to I come don't, in I don't with get it a either. shotgun. I don't get it either. But, don't believe me? Just wait, because the show itself shows how stupid it is to carry a shotgun. I'm just going to shove my mouth. Let's watch and see what happens to old shotgun slinger and see if that decision pays shotgun off for him. Shotgun slinger. All right, pre play. What do you say, Abel? Yeah, Morphe Guardians headed to the kid bucket. 40 feet. 20 feet. 10 feet. Why do you have a shotgun? He's right. already reloading it. He got in one gunfight. That was like three rounds. He's already having to reload. If you had 30 rounds, you would have still a full mag left. Yeah, I get that. And I bet James Reese was probably like, bro, what the fuck, when he showed up with that shotgun. But what I take from this scene is that was a good, essentially an L-shaped ambush, right? The ambush was solid, That yeah. was pretty nice. Like, they drew them to the, the kill box, as they said. Got everybody there, looking out to where the, the sniper or the Overwatch position was, and they didn't even realize that they had all these guys online ready to hit them from the side. Yeah, I still don't buy the whole, I'm going to push this button, you're going to hear static, he's not responding, and you're going to send your entire element to go check on him. Yeah. Why would you do that? Or um, why would we walk as a group to go check on this guy? If we think that he's not responding and therefore there's a potential issue. Well, they probably also didn't assume it was going to be that much of a problem. They probably just like, oh, his radio's out again. It's raining. It's probably something with that. Yeah. I'm just going to go check on him. Yeah, I'm not even mad at that part. I'm just you're, entirely you're mad stuck the on the shotgun. shotgun. Because <laughs> already he's out of ammunition for this True. gunfight. True, you're right. And the, he's having to reload look, his shotgun. the shotgun is not the preferred tool, especially for this environment. But this show is supposed to be the bee's knees on what's hot. I mean, these are Navy Steel. Maybe that's all he had. I don't know. Sean? How is that all you had? You're in Mexico, <laughs> bro. You just That's all they could get down there. Who knows? You just killed like five guys with AK-47s. You don't want to pick one of those up because maybe one of those is a ten times better decision maybe than trusty. your shotgun? I don't know. He's the, the breacher on the team, and he just really likes that shotgun. And that's exactly when an SF guy would carry a shotgun. As a breacher, as a secondary weapon system. Right. It's on your back It's or on your back or attached to your side. It's this big with a pistol right. grip, and it's got uh, the with the hat, hat and rounds in it, which are specifically designed for breaching so that they don't... I those, man. I hated them. In really? Afghanistan, we had to clear... Uh, there was a... Uh, what is it called the, when they have a, a shops? A bazaar? Yeah, yeah. So they had a bazaar, and we we're looking for a weapons cache. So we're like, we have to go in this place. And the sun was coming up, so we knew we were going to get ambushed as soon as the sun came up. So we were being quick. Like, we got to get back on our trucks and go. And so I went, and I started breaching this whole line of... Uh, uh, the of the stores in the mm -hmm. bazaar looking for the weapons and every time I shot man I swear the it was like coming up yeah. and hitting me in the face yeah. and stuff and by the end of it like my knuckles were hurting because I kept getting sh like a uh, blowback on my knuckles yeah. on my face and I, I, it got to a point where I was like dude I don't want to open any more of these doors. I'm <laughs> done like, with here this. you take this yeah I've already I've already opened like 10 of these bizarre doors I've just shotgun and all just down the row and as I was shotgunning the team would go in and clear it and I was like Boom! Ah, that one. Boom! Ah. <laughs> so, but that's when you would carry a shotgun. Not you, as your primary. Not weapon. as your primary weapon. It's the dumbest primary weapon when you know you're going to go against multiple combatants that I could possibly think of. That would have been funny and and really authentic though if they would have had that scene in the beginning. Like he shows up and he's like, "Dude, what the fuck?" Yeah. And See, that like, would have ah, been funny. Uh, yeah. Right. See, and I'm explaining that. But. Yeah. It's like, dude, seriously, a shotgun. And he's like, "That's all I had." Do Boom. Done. All right. We solved the whole problem right there. <laughs> And that would have been funny. And then he's like, that's all I had. And then halfway through, he could have been loading the rounds, and then uh, Reese could have looked at him and be like... Yep, just shaking his head. You see? 
Exactly. You know, add some little bit of humor in there instead of everything being so serious. But I get it. He's got to be serious because he's got a tumor, right? <laughs> <laughs> Outside your range, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Loading again. Nice, nice, nice. I think Chris Pratt's doing a great job in this scene. Yeah. You could tell he had good technical direction as yeah. far as like his. He's his like soft aiming down his sights. He's staying really like focused on looking down his sights. Yeah. Shooting through drywall, knowing that I could definitely hit you oh, through this for drywall. Sure. Yeah. This is definitely gonna punch. I think Chris is doing a great job. Like, I, I forget that he's not an SF guy in, during this scene. Mm -hmm. Really cool. I thought it was hilarious that the guy tried to shoot probably way too far for a shotgun. <laughs> like 150 yeah. yards across. <laughs> he's, he's trying to shoot across with a shotgun. It's like, oh, yeah. That's, like, that's not going anywhere, man. Not the best weapon decision choice for that, is <laughs> he's it? He's just making noise at that point. Yeah. All right, go ahead. What the hell? Even that little chest is dope. Yeah. Who's reloading again? Fuck. Give me suppressive fire on building two now. I'm reloading. All right, pause. Oh, yo, give me suppressive fire on building two now. How about you just shoot all the people that are shooting at me? <laughs> Why do I got to tell you to give me suppressive That's fire a, on building two? Right, because he probably knows where they are. He knows where they're moving the whole time. Yeah. So. Everything else is fair game. Yeah, shoot You see it. people shooting like in the courtyard be like, all. well, I would shoot them, but you didn't tell me to. Yeah, you didn't say building two, bro. <laughs> I thought you, you guys were having fun. Like, you're just hanging out, shooting back and forth. It was a volley. Like, I didn't want a third party this gunfight. When we like, were, this isn't Call of Duty, bro. Kill them. When we were taught, taught an assault or something like this, like you have your fields of fire and everything else is fair game. As we're moving, you're yeah. going to know each phase your line phase or whatever. Lines, yeah, yeah and you're going to shift your fire. Yeah. So why is he just sitting there just like twiddling his thumbs waiting for the call? That yeah. doesn't make any sense. Well, all right, James, now that you said that, <laughs> I'm going to lay suppressive fire and kill everyone that's shooting at you. So I, I would hope that you would just make that decision on your own. He could have taken out everybody else. They could have just walked through. Yeah, this <laughs> gunfight's completely irrelevant <laughs> because clearly you have Overwatch that has eyes on everyone. And they could just kill everyone. Your yeah. Overwatch could have put down this entire fight and you guys would have been chucking right along, and you wouldn't need to reload your shotgun for the 15th time during a gunfight. He even said it. He's like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's because you picked a stupid-ass weapon, <laughs> dummy. Didn't that, that whole thing feel like... There's only one more uh, note after this. Didn't that whole thing feel like a, a movie game? Like, or a movie? I'm sorry. A, a video, video game. game. Yeah, yeah. A video game is like, like... the coordinated yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the whole time is like you're fighting the little guys, and then you get a little harder, and then they get a little harder, and then you get to the boss <laughs> level. <laughs> yeah. And then once you defeat the boss, you're like, ah, I win the game. Yeah. Like, it felt like an episode of Mario. <laughs> I thought it was cool, though, that he was like... He knows now, Mr. Shotgun Man, he's got to take a precision shot. So it looked like he was putting up his sights. Is that what he was doing? I didn't see that. Who did it? Uh, the shotgun guy. He did. He put up sights? It looked like he put up sights. Maybe this is blocking my view. I hope he didn't put up sights. It looked like he put up sights <laughs> to go with the precision shot. He would shot. put up sights. He's like, <laughs> hold that thought. <laughs> he attaches the scope. <laughs> he's like, and I'm ready. The only thing in my mind is him going in his head is like, did I put a slug or a buckshot in there? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I hope it's a buckshot, or I yeah. hope it's a slug. <laughs> yeah, he probably watched Dave Chappelle right before this. He's like, buckshot, birdshot, buckshot. <laughs> that was uh, one of my favorite skits, dude. <laughs> he was like, I had to go buy a shotgun. He said, what you want to do is put in a birdshot, buckshot, birdshot. <laughs> you gave me mine. 
Ah, so you do. Jack Carr's tomahawk. <laughs> I mean, that's a bit much. That's it. The fact that he he attaches intestines to the the wall and then tells them to walk. <laughs> Where? That's, I think that's pretty badass. It is. Yeah. I mean, it, if family, you killed your family, family yeah, that's on par. The easy way would be just to kill him, right? That'd be too easy for the guy. It's like, yeah. well, I'm gonna rip your intestines out and I'm Ooh. gonna to walk and slowly let it coil out of yourself. He I doesn't. Mean, he doesn't walk though. He just sits and dies. It's like I'm gonna use this as a leash and walk you like a dog with your intestines. I don't know, man. I, I think it, I, I like the idea of going like morbid with it because you want that like punishment and you want it to th seem like he's off it, off his rocker. So I think it's pretty cool. I just it's just nasty. It's just nasty. It's just nasty. I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't have been my choice of uh, ways to do it. I don't, I'm not gonna reach in and grab yeah, his intestines yeah. his and intestine, fondle them and like. And then I gotta like hit it, and then I would uh, probably have missed. And his testing would have fallen. Yeah, shit, you're going to get the oh, juice yeah, yeah. all over you. And, I got and, that, and, I'll, and it comes out of my hand. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And then I would hit it with the thing. And then it would fall. I'm like, ah, oh, come it's on. It's going to cut and the doo doo's going to come out. And just... All right, guys. So there it is. Episode four of The Terminal List. I was hoping it was going to get better. Uh, to me, it's just talky, talky, talky. I don't, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I can't get into the show, guys. But I think we made a breakthrough today. Yes. You realize you're looking at it from the wrong perspective. Wrong perspective. If you look at it from the perspective of a chick flick that kind of hooks guys up in the process, hey, yeah, there we it's go. pretty good. All right, we're, we're making progress. We're making we're progress. There. It's, a, it's, a, it's a good show once you take the blinders off and stop thinking of it as an action show. Oh, it's, it's less John Wick. It's less John Wick and more telenovela meets, uh, what's that, sh the channel? Lifetime? Lifetime. <laughs> Like, if you put telenovela on a lifetime, and then, like, you also get a little action, that's what this show is. Okay. So now I can Look, appreciate it. Look, we're making progress, and that's fine. Right, One we'll, step at a time. We'll take it. By the end of this series, I can't wait. You're going to be like, this is the best show ever. Well, I love it, man. I can't wait to watch I'm it I'm sorry, again. guys. <laughs> Season two. All right, guys, so you hope you enjoyed that episode, and if you love this show, I apologize. Listen, we all are allowed to have our opinions. Just because, <laughs> excuse me, just because I don't agree doesn't make the show bad it doesn't mean that i'm right i could be wrong as shit but i'm an opinionated person this is our channel so we get to put our opinions on there if you don't like it let us know in the comments and trust me we read them so if you think i'm a giant douche wagon and i need to shut my mouth put it in the comments and i'll read it and i'll still keep talking but i'll know how you feel and that <laughs> means something so <laughs> at least you get you get to air that means something. you get to air your grievances because I do read all the comments. I don't always get a chance to comment on them, but Abel reads them, Kurt reads them. Um, so if you guys are down in the comment section, just know we are seeing your, all your comments uh, and we're listening. We're taking notes when you guys recommend movies, um, and we're taking notes when you guys are like you're idiots and you're wrong. Uh, and it is what it is. So hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, go check out the FNGAcademy.com, guys. We have the tier three program if you want to watch this uncensored. Um, then sign up for the uh, tier three, which is 25 bucks a month. And we put on all kinds of stuff, especially to help you guys get selected. So all the stuff that we used to do on the channel, we're still doing it, but now we mainly do it for the paid channel. Uh, obviously, to, mainly to try and find that balance of having fun uh, for the YouTube channel, but trying to help guys on the back end, mm -hmm. you know, and putting our time into uh, the paid channel. And it's only 25 bucks a month. So we're not, you know, charging you any astronomical amount of number. We're just putting it there. Uh, it's kind of like our Patreon, so you could support us, and in turn, we give you a lot of talking heads and, and help you guys try and get selected. Yeah, I think a lot of it, too, is stuff that we can't put on YouTube, yeah. especially anymore with the new YouTube changes. So a lot of story times, a lot of, you know, tips and tricks, things like that. So, Yep, so hope you guys enjoy, and for everyone who is a member of the Tier 1, Tier 2, or Tier 3 program, we thank you guys so much. It means the world to us. We really appreciate you. And if you guys have any recommendations, you could, she should have access to uh, my email, um, so you could send me stuff and you could send Kurt stuff. And if not, in the next uh, video or two, we'll make sure to get our emails out there because we want members to be able to contact us. You can always shoot us an email at info <laughs> at, at info at the fngacademy.com. See you guys next time. Zzzz.